Welcome to another episode of Your Chamber at Work. My name is Stacey Bruzzese and I'll be your host for the day. Please help me welcome our first guest, Samuel Sasso, independent agent, Coco Early and Associates. Welcome, Sam. It's great to have you here today. Thank you, Stacey. It's an honor to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. So, fairly new uh, active member in the chamber you are, yes. and uh, but you're quickly making connections. I yes. see those relationships growing quickly, yep. uh, and your business too here in Greater Haverhill. Yes. I, yeah. Um, so, tell the audience a little bit about um, yourself and how you have really grown so, you know, how you've come to grow so quickly in this area. Sure, absolutely. So uh, my name is Samuel Sasso. I'm 29 years old. I'm a longtime resident of Haverhill. Um, married. My uh, wife, Jenny Sasso, is also a co-owner in a business that we have together, a clean professional cleaning company. And we have three beautiful young girls, all in, uh, well, two are in the Haverhill Public School System. Uh, one is still a baby, uh, running around, giving us a run for our money. But uh, she keeps us young. She keeps us uh, energetic. <laughs> of course. And um, so I got started in real estate because my background was in business management. I'm a graduate of Northern Essex Community College, the business management program. And I knew I wanted to be in business. Before that, I was working as a family advocate for Head Start. I was doing mentor for um, Leahy Behavioral Health. So I was known in the community. I had the experience working with people. Uh, communicating, finding resources, problem solving, um, but I wanted to be more in a business setting. So I knew that um, I always wanted to be into real estate, especially as a potential investor. So I said, no better way to learn the business than to be in the business 100%. Right. And that's kind of how what brought me here so far. Excellent, excellent. So. Um, Tell the audience a little bit more about starting up that business. I sure. know you're affiliated with Coco Early, but you're an independent agent, so you really do all of your own stuff. Yes. Um, and there is a process to becoming a realtor and yes. getting into the business. So share a little bit about your experience with that. Sure. So it was one day I was driving home, and I saw the sign you know, license course, you know, here. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I, I firmly believe that if you want to do something, you just have to do it. And that's how you start get the ball rolling. So I pulled over on the side of the road. I hopped out. I went in. I said, sign me up. And I began the licensing course training. It's uh, 40 hours uh, in, the, in the school or wherever they're holding the, the course. But you have to be in the building. It's 40 hours. Once your 40 hours is complete, you are eligible to take the state and national exam. So it's a two-part test. I remember waking up three hours early every day, going to bed three hours late, studying, studying, studying. Sure. Um, I studied for about a month straight. I've never studied so hard for anything <laughs> in my life. Uh, I've heard that people, you know, oh, my God, the horror stories. People fail, took right. them three times. So I studied my butt off, and I took the test in Boston. I passed the first time. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. And, um, and I interviewed with some local brokers. Um, and after interviewing with the staff, uh, specifically William uh, Molina out of the Bradford office, one of the managing partners there, I, I just knew it was a right, the right fit for me, um, bilingual in Spanish. And I felt that that's where my skills would be best put to use. Um, they already had a well-established name, and I really like Coco Early because of the community uh, involvement that they have. Right. Um, and so I, I just felt that that would be the best spot for me to start my business. I would be uh, local. I would be in Haverhill in Bradford uh, is where the uh, office is. So I said, you know, why not be in the community which already knows me as I start this, um, this new business? Excellent. And are you serving um, families outside or or homeowners, home buyers outside of Haverhill, or are you mainly focusing in the uh, in the Haverhill area? Great question. I service all. Oh, I'm licensed in Massachusetts, okay. so um, I will go anywhere. You know, if if it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I have been doing a lot of business in Haverhill. Haverhill's been great to me. The community's been great. A lot of support. Uh, but I've also done deals in in Lawrence, Methuen, um, Amesbury. So. My specialty is in Merrimack Valley, especially being a you know longtime resident. Absolutely, uh, I feel like I know the area, so I can best advise right. and kind of you know let potential buyers and and uh, that are moving are new to this area what the Merrimack Valley has to offer. So I definitely help anybody uh, in the state of Massachusetts where my license is is good. 
Um, and, yeah. I, and I just, I got into the business, again, like I said, because I was able to take my, you know, experience helping families and then put it into a business setting. So I'm still helping people out, whether it's homeowners, whether it's new home buyers. Of I'm course. still able to help people um, and also be in control of my own business. So it's a win-win. It's a excellent, excellent. And what would you say has been the biggest catalyst to your success so far? Because you've quickly really grown into the role of agent in the area and yeah. become well known. So what would you say, what would you attribute the bulk of that success to? Well, I would contribute a lot to my family. Yep. Um, my mother and father are big supporters of my family, having a strong family first, and then also then the business comes. Um, my wife, who supports me as well. When I'm working, she's with the, with the children, keeping the house. Um, and so those are definitely my, my foundation. Um, you, when, if me and my wife both have to work, you know, my mother's there to help out with the kids, which is great to have that support. So being able to have that freedom, knowing that I can trust my children with family, loving family, I can go to work with not having to worry, you know, what's going on. My right. kids are at daycare or school or whatnot. So that has definitely been the biggest support. Also, the managing partners at the Bradford office, um, they are there for me whenever I need them to be. And just having that support, helping me grow my business, learn the business um, has been completely instrumental. Excellent, excellent. And how, so you have three young girls. You mentioned that your wife also has a business. So you've yep. got two entrepreneurs in the family. Yes. How do you balance that family time, personal life with all that you have going on? Well, it's not easy, <laughs> but I was actually thinking about that question and having the discussion with my wife, and it's not necessarily a balance. It's just knowing your roles. Right. I know that I'm, a, I'm Sam Sasso first. I have to take care of myself first. Then I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm a father, I'm a, a realtor. So knowing my roles, knowing when I have to give 100% to each role, that allows me to, to really be the best that I can when I have to um, dedicate myself to, to each individual right. position. So, so that's what's, you it's know, It's all a give and say. take, yeah. It's all a give and take, yeah. absolutely. Nice, nice. And you have just recently gotten very active in the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Very, very briefly, because I know we're running out of time. Yep. Tell the audience a little bit about what the Chamber has meant to you in that business growth. Sure. The Chamber has been another instrument um, and my success. What I love about the Chamber is the networking. Uh, I love the fact that it promotes, you know, businesses within the greater Haverhill area. I think that's important that each business um, owner is able to get their name out there in the community so that we can all support each other because that's really what it comes from. So the networking events, meeting new business owners, getting new ideas, being active, being social, I think that's all been, the, um, been a really big key. For Excellent. Me. Well, we are appreciative of your participation thank for you. sure, for sure, and your leadership. So thank you. Thank you. Um, that's all the time we have today, Sam. All it goes right. by so fast, yes, but it thank does. you for being with us thank and to our uh, audience at home. Thank you so much for watching. Don't go anywhere. We have another guest coming right up. Welcome back to Your Chamber at Work. Our next guest is Brenda Burkholder, Marketing Director for Nichols Village. So great to have you here today, Brenda. Thanks, Stacy. Absolutely, great to be here. absolutely. So for those that don't know Nichols Village, it's a uh, senior living community located just down the road a little bit in Groveland. Uh, wonderful place, not your typical retirement community, I would say. There's some very unique things going on there. Tell us a little bit about more about Nichols Village. Well, thanks, Stacy. Um, we are for people who are 62 and better. Okay, I love that. We have about 120 people, and we're a nonprofit community. We're unique. We're one of a kind. Nobody else is like us. Um, actually, I'll tell you uh, where we came from. Uh, there was a gentleman named Woodburn Nichols. And he grew up in Groveland in the late 1800s, early 1900s, he lived there. And um, he married a woman named Clara, and he also became a banker, uh, and he also was a clothier, clothier in um, Haverhill. And so he never had any children with Clara, but when he passed away in 1925, he left a sum of money in order to grow 
to build a senior community in Groveland. So, so how that wonderful was, to have that foresight. Yes, you know, it's back great almost foresight. Years ago. That's right, um, and that's one of the things I really think is very interesting about Nichols Village, and many people feel the same way. So um, originally, they were supposed to build the the, the community in um, Groveland uh, or in Haverhill, but then they that the homestead and it was too small, so they got two farms together and put them together, and um, they created uh, over 90 acres of, of land for Nichols Village to be settled on. And so uh, people who come to Nichols Village really love the countryside. Right. I mean, there are a lot of different communities out there, um, but um, if people come to Nichols Village, one of the things is because it's countryside. Right. They don't want to go to a city. They want to go to the countryside. Also, um, our apartments and cottages, we have um, 78 apartments and 16 cottages, and they all are built with large windows, so it's very light. And that's the first thing that most people say when I take them on tours is, oh, wow, look at all the windows. It's so light in here. So it's naturally built so that you can bring the outside into your living sure. area. Sure. Sure. Place you want to be, for sure. Um, for people considering um, Nichols Village as their home, what kind of choices do they have? Well, the choices they have in senior communities is... Um, well, we have independent living only with services. Okay. Okay, and I'll explain that in a minute. Sure. There are other uh, senior communities out there that have uh, assisted living. Yes. Uh, some communities have skilled nursing, and other communities also have the memory care. So there's four different uh, levels of care. The independent, the assisted, the skilled, and the memory care. So when you're looking for a community, you need to think about what your needs are and, and figure out which community is best for you. And I tell people when they come in for tours to go look at everything so you know in your heart what is best for you. Right. So um, we have independent living with services. We have a, a coordinated home care program, and um, they provide skilled nursing and assisted living, like uh, supportive care services like bathing and showering, food preparation, companion care, uh, the skilled nursing. All the activities for daily living, right? That's right, yes. all the activities of daily living. Um, so that's like the assisted living part of ours. But um, you hire care at home on an as-needed, pay-as-you-go basis. You don't pay for it unless you need it. Right. And so that's our model, the, uh, the independent with services if, if needed. And then there's other uh, communities out there that uh, have different models, so it's sure. best to research. Sure, absolutely. Research. But it sounds like there's enough uh, resources available at Nichols Village to help them age in place. That's for right, a good and, long time. and you you hit the nail on the head. Uh, aging in place, nobody wants to move again. Right. So um, if you think that's the best model for you, Nichols Village is the place to be with uh, to be to remain independent. Uh, and the people who come to Nichols Village. They want to remain independent. They really have an independent sure. mind. Sure, they do. Yeah. So when you live around people who are independent, you tend to be more independent. Right. Because everybody around you is independent. Yeah. So things happen. So things happen. So you, you, unfortunately, people you know get injured and they go in the hospital, they get sick, but then they come home and they hire the services, right. whatever they need, and they pay for the services only when they need them. Right. Excellent. Excellent. So in my visits there, I've noticed that the common space has such a warm, inviting uh, feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, and the residents seem to really enjoy, you know, each other mm -hmm. and have a tight-knit community going on. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not by accident. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about what goes into fostering that type of environment. Well, that's a good observation. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, um, well, we're small. Like I said before, we're about 120 people. And so the fact that we're small, we're not p part of a corporate kind of right, um, right. organization. I'm not saying anything bad about corporations, but we are very small, one of a kind, unique. Um, and we can kind of, if people are interested in activities and they don't necessarily see an activity at Nichols Village, um, they can talk to our activities director or our wellness coordinator and say, hey, I'd like to get this program started. And they will help them 
create that program. So it's, it's part of them. We listen to them. I think that's what it is. The staff and, uh, and the residents talk to each other and we listen to each other as best we can. I mean, no, no place you go is going to be perfect. Of course. But in general, like you said, that was an observation you made. Uh, we're very welcoming, welcoming, welcoming and friendly uh, community. And um, I, I'm just happy to be working there because, you know, who, who doesn't want to go to a happy place to work? Absolutely. And Absolutely. the residents are very happy, too. So. I agree. That that's, was my observation, too. Everyone seemed to love where they live. They love mm -hmm. their their apartments or their cottage. Mm -hmm. And uh, they love being with each other as a group. So that's yeah. kudos to you. Um, do you currently have a waiting list? And, and how do, you know, what's the availability of the units over there? Yes. Um, we do have a waiting list. There are about 45 people on the waiting list right now. Now, there are, um, everybody on the waiting list is not waiting for the same thing. Right. We have one bedroom, one bedroom with a den, two bedroom, two bedroom with a den, and cottages. So they're all waiting for different things. Also, we have two types of residency plans. One is a rental plan, which is rare to find. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. rentals. And also, the other plan is called a lifetime refundable tenancy, and that's where you put a large sum of money down, and then you pay a common fee every month. Okay. And that LRT fee, that lifetime refundable tenancy fee, that large sum of money, comes back to you or your state either at 100% or 90%. Okay. 100% after five years if you move out after five years, and 90% under five years. So that's how the money comes back to you or your state. Lifetime refundable tenancy, that's that plan. And the rental's basically a rental. Sure. Um, and um, so everybody on my list, too, of the 45 people, they're at different places in their process of moving. Okay. So this is, sounds kind of funny, but I categorize them for the purposes of explaining the wait list. I categorize them from uh, cold, which is kind of weird, cold, warm, and hot. But sure. to explain that to people, uh, hot people are ready to move, warm, maybe, cold, they're not ready to move. So when I say 45 people, everybody's not waiting for the same sure. thing. Understood. They're at a different place in the process. So it would be appropriate for um, interested folks to still come and tour and uh, talk to you about an opportunity to move That's at some right. point in time. That's right. And there's no pressure to, to move in now. You get on the wait list. Um, I suggest if you think Nichols Village is where you want to come, you get on the wait list as soon as possible because then you're in line. And, um, and if I call you and you say you're not ready, that's okay. Say no. I don't drop you to the bottom of the list. You stay where you are. Right. And um, it, it's best to get on the list and in line so you're prepared Excellent. You know, for the Excellent. future. Excellent. Sign me up. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what most people I'll say. Only thirty years. <laughs> yeah, especially the elders who come in with their adult children. The adult children say, "Oh, where do I sign up?" Yeah, they want to exactly. Come. So it's interesting. Well, Brenda, we are out of time for today, but it's been such a pleasure talking to you and hearing more about Nichols Village. I look forward to my next tour there for sure. <laughs> And to our uh, audience at home, please give a call to uh, Nichols Village. We'll provide all the contact information for you at the bottom of the screen. Set up a time to see the facility with Brenda. You won't be disappointed, I'm sure. Stay tuned for our next guest. We'll be right back. Our last guest is someone I'm very happy to introduce to you, Ashley Berg, the brand new membership coordinator at the Greater Haverhill Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for being here with us, Ashley. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for it's having me, Stacey. It's been a pleasure having you in the office, and now I'm glad to have you here on TV. It's fantastic. This is a home away from home in a, in a way for me, so it's nice to be able to marry those two things together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of that, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, your background, and where you're coming from? Sure, absolutely. So I am a born and raised Haverhill resident, graduated from Haverhill High School in 2006, uh, very proud Hilly, and I spent most of my postgrad years uh, working in the nonprofit sector, um, mostly doing relationship management, volunteer training, volunteer recruitment. Um, I moved out to Los Angeles for a couple of years, but just moved back in August, and I'm super excited to hit the ground running with the chamber and get stuff started. 
Excellent. We are excited to have you. And in the, just a couple of short weeks, you've really done so much already in terms of helping with our events. You've seen a lot. You've done a lot. I have. So, I have. It's been great. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, what interested you in working at the chamber? You know, what, what piqued your interest when you first saw that job post? Sure. So I saw the posting come up and I thought, you know, this is a community that I'm really passionate about. Like I said, I was born and raised here. I spent my most of my whole life here. I frequented the businesses downtown. I have my regular haunts, my restaurants, the bars that I go to, you know, places I get my hair cut. And I thought, what better way to give back to this community than to be a part of the chamber, where we do so many different things between the events, like the Christmas Stroll and Kids Fest, where we get to actually be boots on the ground, interacting with community right. members, families, um, you know, other business people. But also we get to work with nonprofits. We get to work with small business owners, large business owners. Um, there is such a plethora of opportunity with the chamber that being able to actually give back to my community and participate in my community this way was an opportunity I just couldn't pass up. Well, we're glad you saw it our way. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. So I know um, just in a couple of weeks that you've really developed some ideas and thoughts and plans around uh, not only programming, but uh, membership deficits, et cetera, and mm -hmm. things you're going to work on. Uh, share with us a little bit of, you know, about your plans and some of the things that you've seen so far. Absolutely. So I think the challenge for any nonprofit or any community organization is keeping the community engaged and bringing in new people. Um, Haverhill is 60,000 residents and has thousands upon thousands of businesses, way more than I would have ever expected. Um, and many of those businesses and groups are not chamber members. Right. And I see nothing but positives as being a chamber member. So my goal is to really get out there and start meeting people and conveying what those opportunities include, um, letting them know what the benefits are of being a chamber member. I think that if you are a business owner, if you're part of a nonprofit organization, even if you're an individual that's just looking to network and be a part of something greater, there are tons of opportunities that the Chamber provides for every single person in every walk of life. Um, I also really love the opportunities that for women that the Chamber offers as well. Um, so that really attracted me and I want to be able to help participate in that more and bring more women into the fold. Um, in addition to that, I also am really excited to announce that we're starting a young professionals group next year. Um, we're going to have our kickoff meeting in January. There seems to be a lot of interest in our young professionals in the Haverhill community, whether they are part of uh, local businesses, whether they work outside of the city but still live in Haverhill. Um, we really want to be able to have an opportunity for young professionals to get together, to learn from each other, to network with each other, but also be able to communicate with leaders in the community. Um, you never know when somebody might be able to be a mentor or might be able to provide skills that you may not right. be able to learn on your own. Uh, and so I think that there's a lot of want and need there. I think that Haverhill is sort of on the cusp of really bringing back a younger generation. Um, growing up here, I always heard about people graduating and leaving and never right. coming back, and I want to stop that from happening. I think Haverhill is an amazing place to live, uh, amazing place to eat, work, play, and so I want to be able to help foster and grow that community. I would agree. I have seen, uh, just in the couple years that I have been here in Haverhill, I have really seen uh, an about face in the city. Absolutely. You know, I, I see a younger generation coming back, wanting to participate you know, wanting to contribute and be part of the, the greater community. Uh, and there's so much opportunity here right now with the Harbor Place project, yep. really kind of Absolutely. helping people and helping investors springboard into other opportunities and new businesses. Um, it's really an exciting time here it in is. Haverhill. It's it really, very exciting. Really and Haverhill offers so many things for so many people. Uh, as a young professional, there's so many opportunities here. All of the bars and restaurants are walkable. You can drive 20 minutes to the beach, an hour to the mountains, take the train into the city. Um, it's really accessible. And then if you're somebody who's looking to start a family, it's affordable. There are beautiful neighborhoods to, to really kind of dig your roots and, and stick around. And I think that there, that's a wonderful place to, to grow up and to be a part of and to put some roots in and, and be long-lasting members of the community. So I hope with this group we'll be able to really keep people around for quite some time. I think so. I think you're going to grow some really great leaders out of that group. They'll be our next set of, uh, you know, city city officials, mm -hmm. if you, so to speak, and and be leading the organizations and the nonprofits too. Absolutely. Um, to a, to a next generation. That's if you the will. goal. Yes. Yes. Um, in the short time that you've been with the chamber, what have you found to be the best thing about working at the chamber? Obviously, it's making business connections, but sure. you know, 
what else would what else would you like to know? Uh, I would say probably the best thing is really getting to talk to people in the community. Um, you know, we get to hear from so many different people, so many different business owners, so many different community members, and I think being able to hear their um, their positive experiences and their grievances and their problems is really what I'm interested in. Um, and I love to talk to people. I love to see, you know, smiling, happy faces. When we were at the Christmas stroll this past weekend, all I saw were happy people in Haverhill, which makes me happy. Um, and so being able to be part of that community and really get out there and meet people, I think is the best part about this job. Um, it makes it less work and more fun, which I think is a great thing to have. Not mm -hmm. many people can say that about their jobs. That so. is true. That is true. And yet we're still helping. Absolutely. Helping businesses grow. Um, we're advocates mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of even smaller businesses don't realize that we do that, that we take on that role, that we are their voice sometimes at the State House mm -hmm. here in Massachusetts or at City Hall uh, here in Haverhill. Um, and it's it's a role that we we enjoy and we're happy to provide. Uh, and then, of course, all the opportunities for education and, and personal growth and professional Absolutely. growth. Um, what's not to love? Yeah, it's a really <laughs> exciting time to be a part of the chamber. It's a really exciting time to be part of the city. So I'm excited to hit the ground running. Well, welcome to the chamber. Thank you. Officially. Thank you. Um, if anyone at home is interested in speaking with Ashley more about membership, uh, about opportunities that the chamber offers currently, about our upcoming Young Professionals group, please feel free to reach out to her. The office number is 978-373-5663. She can also be reached via email at ashley at haverillchamber.com. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Your Chamber at Work. We look forward to seeing you next time.